In this video, we're going to be deep diving into Comica's brand new wireless microphone, the Vimo C. This is a dual channel 2.4 GHz mini wireless microphone. Out of the box, the whole package comes in a compact little hard case for carrying the microphone system and all the extra accessories. You also get the standard user manual, stickers, warranty card, plus whatever these are. The system comes pre-charged at about 75% in a sexy little charging case that all the cool new wireless microphone systems are using these days. As far as accessories go, you get the following. A TRS to TRRS 3.5mm adapter cable. This is used for connecting the microphone to most non-camera devices like cell phones or some laptops. A male USB-C to female USB-C and 3.5mm adapter. A USB-C to USB-A cable for charging. A coiled TRS to TRS 3.5 cable which will be your main one for connecting between the receiver and your camera. And two small wind socks to slide over the end of the transmitters to reduce wind noise or the sound of microphones rubbing on clothing. When first touching the hardware I was concerned things were finished in a way that loves to hold onto fingerprints but a little bit of handling this seems to have mostly faded keeping a clean professional look. Though is what I'd call a very inexpensive dual wireless microphone system coming in at only 139 US dollars things do feel a little cheap. Hinges, clips, the fit inside the case they don't feel premium but they also don't feel like some black market knockoff, it's just the plastic is a little light and hollow. The lid does magnetically snap close and the three devices each also magnetically snap down into the charging case holding them there. Which on the base of features a USB-C port for charging everything at once, plus a reset button if for some reason you need to reset everything. The charging case also has its own internal battery for recharging your transmitters and receiver while they're not in use and stored inside. The battery level on the case can also be viewed just by opening up the lid revealing four blue lights each of which represents 25% of the case's battery life. Straight out of the box everything is paired up and I found it really easy to use. Each device turns on or off when removed or placed back into the charging case. Each transmitter has two buttons, a mute button which also powers the transmitter off if held and a noise cancelling button which I'll get into more details about later on plus a USB-C port for charging the transmitters though I don't know why you wouldn't just charge the lot in the charging case all at once, maybe doing so individually is a little faster. The receiver has three buttons, the first being a mode button allowing you to switch between mono, stereo or safety. For those who aren't familiar that's one channel, both channels or safety is two of the chain channels but one is a little bit of a lower volume so if you ever accidentally record your audio too loud you have a slightly quieter one you can go to as a backup it's incredibly useful and the other two being volume buttons for each respective transmitter with four different level options the receiver has a nice bright high contrast display showing you what mode it is in plus its battery life and what transmitters are connected plus their battery life it also does show audio levels for each transmitter but I found this a little laggy and inaccurate plus just too small to be reliable to use and I only found it useful for double checking that the receiver was receiving audio. The receiver also has a USB-C port for charging but this can also be used as a digital out and also has a 3.5mm aux output for connecting to your camera or recorder. The wind socks are okay, they do their job well and they stay on good enough but personally I would have liked these to stay on a little more securely but they also have not fallen off for me yet so this is just me being picky. You can still fit all the devices into the charging case with the wind socks on but you can't close the lid so I doubt you'll do this often other than if you need to give a little speed charge before use. The actual hard travel case that holds everything is great though, the zips are good, it's rugged and it's the perfect size, not once did I feel like I was crushing everything when closing it. And as the charging case doesn't hold your adapter of choice or the wind socks you will be using this hard travel case a lot. Now there are a few things about the Vimo C that it does not feature that some of its more expensive competitors do. The transmitters do not have a way of connecting a lavalier microphone to them if you'd like to use a more discreet microphone. And the Vimo C does not have any options for recording audio on its own or as a backup. You are required to output the audio to another device. But that said, the audio quality out of the Vimo C is very impressive. My first major test actually ended up being out on a job where I had brought the Vimo C as a backup, but I managed to forget my primary wireless microphone, the Rode Wireless Go 2, which we'll compare to in a moment. 
So I ended up deep ending the VMOC into a variety of different interview locations, each with different voices and different environments. So far, all of this video's audio has been recorded using a far better studio microphone in a much more controlled environment, so please be mindful of that when comparing the following to what you are hearing now. Each of the following audio was recorded using the VMOC's noise cancelling turned off, audio levels on the receiver set to 1 out of 4, and the camera audio level set to lower than normal to prevent clipping, as I am comfortable boosting and cleaning up audio later on in post, though what you're about to listen to is pretty much straight out of camera. It was really obvious with our first waste audit. Um, we are an office in town and we generate a whole bunch of compost that is commercially compostable. So um, compostable lunch containers, biodegradable coffee cups, biodegradable drink cups, hand towels that people use. We've really just, that was the joining of the program. It meant that we, uh, we sat down and we put every single bit of material that we collected over a two week period into bundles and we measured them all and we actually percentage wise figured out what, what was going what. Learning different ways to recycle and better ways to recycle. There were so many things that maybe we were putting in the wrong rubbish bin and things like that uh, and things that we were just putting into general waste that we found out that we could recycle and that was huge and changed our mindset here as well as for me at home as well. So if you go back and listen to each of those audio clips, you'll hear a different background noise which is from each environment, but overall, the audio came out incredibly clean and I was very impressed with it. Next up, to compare to what I would consider one of the more popular wireless microphone systems around, the Rode Wireless Go 2. Though do note, the Rode Wireless Go 2 is roughly double the price of the VMOC and with some of its own pros and cons, but I thought it would be more beneficial to you to hear this comparison blind. I'll reveal which microphone is which after the examples and share my thoughts on each. This is an audio test with microphone number one. I am sitting in the corner of my lounge with microphone number one clipped a hand span's distance down my shirt while watching a quick brown fox jump over a lazy dog while talking towards microphone number one. This is an audio test with microphone number two. I am sitting in the corner of my lounge with microphone number two clipped a hand span's distance down my shirt while watching a quick brown fox jump over a lazy dog while talking towards microphone number two. Feel free to jump back 32 seconds and listen to each of those again, but to be honest, I think unless you are wearing headphones, and depending on how much YouTube compression affects this, you most likely cannot hear much of a difference. Which I think gives huge weight to the VMOC as a solution that will give you professional sounding audio. To then do the exact same example with the VMOC's noise cancelling turned on, while there is little to no noise to remove, I can hear a slight drop in audio quality. I am sitting in the corner of my lounge with microphone number one clipped a hand span's distance down my shirt while watching a quick brown fox jump over a lazy dog. I am sitting in the corner of my lounge with microphone number one clipped a hand span's distance down my shirt while watching a quick brown fox jump over a lazy dog. For those of you comfortable cleaning up audio in post, the VMOC's cancellation is something I wouldn't personally use, but if you are live broadcasting, or if speed is very much a factor in your workflow, or if you're just not that comfortable or experienced with audio editing, to have the audio cleaned up this well from the click of a single button, I think will really appeal to many. One thing I found incredibly surprising is the quality of the noise reduction from it. So where I'm standing at the moment, I am maybe three foot from a light source which makes a little bit of a buzz, like if I'm quiet you'll hear the noise of it. Now if I push the sound noise reduction button on the microphone which I've got clipped just under my collar so far too close to my throat you'll hear the difference. In three, two, noise reduction on. Noise reduction off. Noise reduction on. The quick brown fox then jumped over the lazy dog while trying to attempt to record an audio test for a voiceover with sound cancelling on. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog while attempting to record a voiceover with sound cancelling off. Finally, when it comes to range testing, there are some interesting results. This test, like most of mine, is not complex. 
I set my camera up while recording while walking away from it counting off paces. To start with trying to transmit through my chest. After a huge 200 steps I then turn around and walk back once again while counting off steps. The Vimo C is advertised as having up to 200 meter range which is insanely high and requires perfect open conditions. Transmitting through me I had perfect transmission up to about 12 meters. Unusable after about 40 meters and had lost transmission completely after about 46 meters though it is hard to tell exactly as transmission was very patchy before then. But what was very impressive was at the 200 meter mark the moment I turned around things instantly reconnected and sounded perfect just like I was a few meters away. For the sake of testing I quickly turned my back again and lost signal and once again instantly reconnected as I turned back to face the camera and maintained a perfect connection the whole walk back. Can this microphone pick me up? I'm standing beside a stream 200 paces away facing the camera. Can this microphone pick me up over this distance? So to no surprise, like all wireless systems, range is very line of sight dependent. But with line of sight, the range out of the VMOC is more than you should practically ever need. So to wrap things up, if you've got the time to set things up and you're comfortable with audio editing, there are better wireless microphone systems out there that will cost you a lot more. But if your content is more for social media, if speed of workflow is important to you or you're pretty casual with your needs, then for its price, the Comica Vimo C will give you all day battery life, connect to pretty much every single device, be very easy to understand and use, plus supply you with fantastic audio over an insane range. My name's Thomas Busby. If you've found this video helpful, please consider doing the usual of the like, share and subscribe down below. It truly does help me out. But otherwise, until next time, I will catch you next time.